Well guys, if you've been watching my YouTube channels for the last few days, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of buying stocks in the stock market as of right now, okay? You know that. And I've even talked about, I believe we're gonna have another stock market crash. I believe we're gonna have another one coming up sometime soon. I believe the market has ran way too much and I believe you know not nearly enough of the economic damage has really been tallied up and we're gonna start to see that once these economies start to open back up and we see, whoa, business is still gonna be down quite dramatically for possibly you know at least one to two years, if not three years plus, okay? So I believe another stock market crash is coming and, and I've even shared with you guys the levels that I'm planning on buying back into the market and start putting a lot of money Money into the market. You guys know I'm already investing in the market. I have a lot of money invested, but I have a lot of money on the sideline and I'm not putting that money in right now. So you know I shared that with you as well. But here today we're going to talk about if that stock market crash happens, the one I've you know been talking about the last couple of days, if that goes ahead and that happens, what are 10 stocks that I would buy? And that's what we're getting into today's video. Hope you guys really enjoy this one. These are all 10 very different companies. It's not like I just picked a bunch of tech stocks or a bunch of growth stocks or dividend stocks. There, there's some of everything. There's some value stocks in there, some growth stocks, some stocks that I already own, some stocks that I don't own any shares of that I'm looking to get into. Well, like I said, some growth stocks, some value stocks, some of these pay dividends, some of them don't pay dividends. So I hope you guys really enjoy this. Should be an interesting one. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button if you enjoy these videos. And if you didn't know, we are less than 12 hours away from starting the huge deal on the private stock group, the semi annual membership sale. And I figured, what the heck, since you guys are watching this video here, let's go ahead and start the deal right now, okay? Down there, the pinned comment down there will be the deal a link for all those of you who have been wanting to take advantage of getting in the private stock group. This is your chance. It's gonna end up being 150 bucks off is what we're doing for a semi-annual membership, so it's a great deal for any of you guys that have been looking to get in the group for quite a while. Make sure you take advantage of it. And once you actually join, make sure you join us in the Discord chat. Say hello to everybody. There's a lot of talk in there today. A lot of people talking about stocks and what's going on in the market in, in general, Tesla stock, all those sorts of things. So make sure you say hello to everybody once you get in and once you get in the Discord chat. So once again, you wanna go ahead and take advantage of that. It'll be the pinned comment down there, save yourself 150 bucks and uh, get in the private group. I hope you really enjoy that as always. Okay, let's start getting this guys. Stock number one of these 10, it's not like these are in order of like the most important to the least important or the ones I like the most to the least or something like that. But the first stock up here is Nvidia Corporation. Ticker symbol on this one's NVD. So NVIDIA Corporation, they're in the forefront of so many amazing technologies, okay? The, the ray tracing, which they put into video games re recently, is such a game changer. It's, it's such amazing technology. And NVIDIA, it's just, they're in the forefront of so many industries. They're doing some amazing things when it comes to self-driving cars, artificial intelligence. I, in my opinion, NVIDIA is going to be one of the most important companies probably in the world over the next five to ten years. It's just, you know, it's an amazing company with amazing tech and they're doing some amazing things over there, okay? Market capitalization on this one is $165 billion right now. It's $291 stock as of right now. Ford P on this one is about 36. And when we look at all these Ford P's of these companies, Keep in mind, the landscape is changing fast, okay? We, you know, it's really hard to forecast some of these companies for P's because it, it, a lot of it depends on when the economy opens back up, how long it takes on employment numbers to come down and GDP to get back, you know, in, in a good state, and many different various factors. So keep in mind, this is probably the most uncertain time when it comes to these Ford P's, okay? But, you know, 36 roughly Ford P on the stock. I think it's a little bit rich for Nvidia. I love this stock. I think they're gonna grow quite a bit over the next five, 10 years. But, you know, I will say it's a little rich. Great balance sheet on Nvidia. You can't argue that, okay? Nvidia, amazing balance sheet, almost 11 billion dollars in total cash on their balance sheet and two billion dollars in debt so they could pay off all that debt literally overnight if they wanted to and still have eight billion plus just sitting around on that balance sheet never mind you know as these future profits can you know continue to roar in for the company you know that number is just going to build and build and build okay so as far as me what i'm looking at when it comes to nvidia stock as far as price points so if nvidia drops under 200 which is definitely possible if we get a huge bunch of weakness in the market and the market drops you know 20 percent 30% definitely possible to get Nvidia under 100 you know under $200 if that happens 
I will start buying NVIDIA. I would love to make this into a very nice size position and if it falls under 200, that's where I start buying. And the big smiley face, that's where I start buying really heavy and that's if NVIDIA falls under $175. If NVIDIA stock falls under $175, I will uh, be buying big. And so for all these stocks, you'll see a, a small smiley face and a big smiley. The big smiley is when I start buying super heavy. So uh, very, very interested in buying NVIDIA stock if that one falls and we have some type of big stock market crash, okay? Stock number two up here is Apple Corporation, ticker symbol AAPL. So you guys know I used to be an Apple shareholder and I made a lot of money on Apple stock and I love Apple stock. But recently, the valuation has gotten very stretched on this company, in my opinion, okay? Now looking at a company that's trading at about a $1.2 trillion market capitalization, looking at a company that's trading at a forward P of 23, roughly. Once again, these forward P's, we'll see how it all shakes out. But in my opinion, around a 23 forward P for Apple, it's rich, okay? There's a lot of questions about, you know, what Apple's going to do this year and also next year, if the business can even grow, right? I, you know, they, they have amazing products and services, right? They're obviously, the App Store, amazing. Amazing. The subscriptions model, they continue to build that out. The iPhone business, extremely sticky. iPads, Macs, you know, these are the type of products that if people, you know, uh, need a new one, they go and get the, whatever the newest generation of Apple products are. We don't really need to talk about business model. We know it's amazing. But, you know, this is a company I'm not sure is going to grow that much over the next, let's say, 12 to 24 months. And when they do grow, the growth will probably be somewhat limited. It's not like this is a company that all, all of a sudden they grow revenues 20, 30%. Probably not the most realistic for Apple. Apple Corporation, right? But it trades at the highest Ford P it's traded at in a long, long time. And so this is a company I need lower, okay? Let's just be quite frank about that. Balance sheet, definitely very good balance sheet, okay? Well over $200 billion if you add up their cash and then their investments, over $200 billion, very nice. But they do have $93 billion in long-term debt, which is an all-time record for Apple. They've bought back a lot of stock and they bought back a lot of stock with some very low interest debt over the past few years. And so that's added up their long-term debt quite substantially, but keep in mind, they could pay that off overnight and they would still have well over $100 billion just laying around on the balance sheet and cash and investments. But like I said, this company has spent a lot of money on stock buybacks, and I mean a ridiculous amount of money on stock buybacks. Like, look at this chart, guys. Look at how much money this company has been you know, spending on stock buybacks. They're the biggest stock buyback buyer out there out of all public companies. They have been just you know, throwing money at stock buybacks and I can say in the past, when Apple was in the hundreds, you know, hundreds of dollars, like when I bought it, when it was like $145 and whatnot, and even, you know, before I got in the stock, when it would fall into like $90 a share, $100 a share, I think that was back in like, I want to say like 2015, somewhere around there, roughly 2016. It definitely made sense for Apple to be buying back their stock very heavy. I'm not so convinced it makes that much sense now when the company's, you know, trading at the type of valuations it is trading at. So they spent a ton of cash flow doing that, right? And their net income hasn't gone up that much. So the EPSs look like, oh wow, their EPS is going up a lot, mainly because they've been buying back so many dang shares. But their net income, honestly guys, hasn't gone up that much. You go back four years ago, they're doing $45 billion in net income. This past year they do 55. That's great, it's a $10 billion increase, but it's not like that's some type of a super impressive number. That's actually really small growth in net income for all those years that passed. And especially if you're stock that's trading at a 4P of over 20, right? So when I look at you know Apple's income statement, I'm like, you know, it's okay, it's okay. It's clear that they've gotten a lot of their growth in EPS strictly from buying back massive, massive amounts of shares, okay? So in my opinion, Apple, I don't like the valuation here, but if it falls under 200, I will start buying the stock. I love Apple, the, the company, and I love the stock overall. I just don't like the valuation right now, and this is for a lot of stocks out there. So Apple under 200, I start buying this. If it falls under 175, which we, we, we need some major weakness in the market. We need the market to go down 20, 30% from here. We need the Dow to go down to maybe like 17,000, 16,000 or something like that. If we could have that type of situation, Apple could likely fall under 175, and that's where I would start buying heavy in this particular stock. So I would love to get in that one. 
but I I'm gonna be patient, okay? I'm gonna be patient. I'm not running out to buy Apple at $290 a share or whatever it's at, okay? Stock number three of 10 is Winning Resorts. Well, right now it's Losing Resorts, okay? But Win Resorts, this is, a, this is actually a stock, unlike Apple and unlike NVIDIA, that I actually already have shares in. I already have shares of Win Resorts, and I'm looking to add more. And right now, the market capitalization for this company is about $7.5 billion. And if you look at back at any recent times for a stock, $7.5 billion is a steal and a half. Win Resorts at $72, $71 a share is a steal and a half. And the only way the stock isn't a steal and a half is basically if you had a once in a hundred year event. And the Roni Rona is a once in a hundred year event that has completely decimated the economy, that has completely decimated the travel industry, Macau business, Las Vegas business, across the board. So usually at, at 71 bucks a share, I'm running out to buy wind stock left and right. It's a little different in this situation. Because like I said, it's going to take a while for these things to recover. So at 71, it's interesting, but it's not that super interesting. Here's what we're looking at. Macau, which is the main market for wind. This is the main market they get their, re their revenues and profits from, right? Macau, they're talking about April gross gaming revenues to dip as much as 95%. 95, this is a one, the, like this is a type of thing you only get in a once in a hundred year event, right? A recession scenario, you're like, okay, maybe business dips 20%, 30%, heck, maybe a really, really bad recession, maybe things would dip 40%. And, and that's kind of what you think about as, as somebody that's like an investor, win resorts like I am, right? But gosh, a once in a hundred year event, you're talking about 95%. They're talking about best case scenario, business is down only 80%. That's rough. It's gonna take Macau quite a while to get back to where it was. Uh, it could take years, literally. It could take two, three, four, five years just for Macau to get back to where it was. Never mind like future growth, right? My city, Las Vegas, they have two of their, their, their biggest properties here in Las Vegas, okay? The win and the encore, right? And these properties are obviously shut down right now. And I believe Vegas, I believe we will come back. And I believe we will be strong again. But it's probably going to be years. I'm going to be honest, guys. I don't think just magically when Vegas opens back up, it's going to be like, oh, room, room capacity is the same as it was. And the restaurants are just as busy. And the gaming floors are in the shows. Are, are there, everything's just as busy. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm going to be completely honest with you. That'd be awesome. But I don't think that's very realistic, okay? I think it's going to take at least a couple of years for, to, for Vegas to get back to where it was. Maybe even three years. Maybe even four years, okay? It's going to take a while. So I think that's something we got to think about. The, the Boston property. Encore Boston Harbor. That's a property they just opened up in, in 2019. And in 2020, it's supposed to be the first year where this property is fully open and, and they can really like, they, they, they got a grasp on things and it's like really exciting and whatnot. And, and when it comes to the Encore property in Boston, gosh, man, um, you know, I don't know that that property is probably not going to do that well. I'll be honest, especially this year and maybe even into next year. So when you kind of look at all this, I need to win a lot lower. Okay. If wind falls under 55, I will buy more shares of this stock. I absolutely will. But if it falls under 40, that's when I start getting real happy and that's when I start flooding money in the stock. But I'm not running out to buy it at $71, $72 a share just because we have a once in a hundred year event going on. And this is this is damaged the economies of, of these travel industries so much that you know usually wins wins a steal at 71, 72. Right now, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not running out to buy it. I, I need it lower from here because Vegas, it's going to take a while for things to get back, you know, probably years. In Macau, same exact thing. It's probably going to take at least two years, if not four or five years to get back to just where things were. Never mind growth ahead of that, okay? So, so that's what I'm looking at for when. Love to add some more shares, but I need the stock lower, okay? Stock number four of 10 here is Qualcomm Corporation. Ticker symbol QCOM is a stock I barely just bought a little of, like, probably a week or two ago, okay? Uh, I just bought a teeny a bit. It was a starting position in the stock and I would love to add more shares of stock. Right now it is $77 a share. Market capitalization for Qualcomm is about $84 billion right now. Forward P in the stock's about 17, but once again, we'll see where all these things shake out. Who knows, that number could be you know, uh, higher than that, maybe lower than that, we'll see. If I have to play one side or another, I'd say it's probably you know, a, a higher than that, okay? So when it comes to Qualcomm, think of them as a semiconductor company, Company and think of them as probably the biggest player when it comes to mobile chips, okay? So if you're thinking about smartphones or just mobile devices in general, Qualcomm's the biggest player in that space, okay? And there's a company when 5G starts to take off, which 5G will
will take off. You know, obviously the Rony Rona is slowing down things as far as a process of building up 5G and getting it launched and things like that. But once 5G does take off, Qualcomm is likely gonna be the biggest winner in the space. I've, I've spent the last two or three years looking at 5G stocks. And you guys know I'm investing in a company named Skywork Solutions that I think will benefit huge from, from 5G. But honestly, there's not another stock in the stock market that I think will benefit more from 5G technology when it comes to our revenues and profits than Qualcomm Corporation. I think they absolutely will benefit more than anybody, okay? So this is a company that, you know, this past year they did, you know, $4.3 billion, almost $4.4 billion in net income over the course of the next five years because of 5G and the money they're gonna make from their 5G chip and their 5G technology overall, I think they're gonna probably 2X or more that number over the next five years. I think over the next five years, they're gonna get to a place where they're doing $8 billion plus of net income. I think that's where this company's going, but obviously there's always the risk with a stock like this. What if it doesn't happen? What if things don't work out? What if their relationship with Apple goes sour again? We know they just you know, uh, dropped all litigation against each other, and we know Apple has agreed to use them and things like that, but what if, what if you know business relationships went sour? What if you know things don't go the way I thought it was? That's always a risk with any of these stocks. There's always a risk with investing, okay? But in terms of Qualcomm, under $65, is where I start buying the stock, and that's where I actually started buying the stock. I bought it very recently. Now, like I said, probably a week, maybe two weeks ago. And I got a little position started, but if this ever drops under 55, which is possible if we did have that stock market crash, uh, I'm gladly putting a lot of money in the stock. It's a very good company that is gonna benefit huge from 5G, okay? So absolutely interested in that one. Just need a little bit lower, okay? Stock number five of 10, non-tech related, is National Beverage Corporation, ticker symbol Fizz, okay? We call this one Fizzy Get Dizzy, all right? So Fizzy Get Dizzy is a $2.3 billion market cap. So the company has $260 million in cash and investments on their balance sheet, guys. $260 million, so they got over 10% of their market capitalization just sitting around in cash and cash equivalents, basically. And, and no, no long-term debt on this company. It's absolutely amazing balance sheet, okay? But once again, $2.32 billion market capitalization and 4P under 19, I think that number is way high. I think their numbers are gonna come in in terms of their 4P, it's actually gonna be way lower than that because I think they're gonna make way more EPS than essentially analysts believe out there. I think business is way stronger. I think sell-through is way stronger. I think demand is way stronger than the analyst community have for Fizz. They have the company hardly growing. I think this year is gonna be a very nice growth year for Fizz, okay? And we'll see about future years, but I think this year is gonna be very nice growth year for Fizz in general, okay? Now, when it comes to Fizz, they make many different drink products, but the main one being LaCroix, which is a sparkling water beverage that has, you know, kind of taken off over the past few years. It's not nearly as many people are interested in drinking soda products, and now they're looking for, for water or, or other types of water that don't have, you know, artificial flavors in them and things like that. And, and that's where a business model like LaCroix definitely comes in. By the way, people ask me, what's my favorite flavor? Uh, the LaCroix, mi favorito be the key lime, okay? I love the key lime. Mmm, that one's really good, okay? So in terms of fizzy get dizzy, under $45, I like the stock a lot, okay? Under 40 is where I buy heavily in the stock. And you guys know, I put my money where my mouth is. And guess what? Just, what was that? Probably like three weeks ago, roughly, the stock was trading under $40. And I put my money where my mouth is and I invested a lot of money in one day. It was like $50,000. Actually, I think it was a little over $50,000 I put in that stock. And that was when it was like, I think on that particular day, it was like $38 or so. I showed screenshots in that video of what I bought it at and whatnot. And uh, we're doing pretty amazing on it. And, and look at the options. We bought some option contracts that day, which I don't make many option moves. I'm very, very selective about when I make option moves. It has to be a big opportunity. And my goodness, guys, we are doing amazing. The Fizzy Get Dizzy options are up 88%. And we've owned those option contracts for literally like, I don't know, two or three weeks now. Like it's not a long amount of time. So uh, we're up $8,500. I'm definitely loving life with that stock. And uh, you know, I'll gladly buy some more if it falls more, okay? Now this next stock up here, this is what I call the wishful thinking stock. The stock that I wish, I wish it could fall a bunch 
Probably not the most realistic scenario, even if we do have a, a you know stock market crash, but it's wishful thinking, okay? And that is Tesla my Tesla stock, okay? You guys know, if you watch this channel all the time, you guys, you guys know what it is, okay? I'm a firm believer in this company. I bought in, it was probably less than two years ago. Um, you know, I've held it through some traumatic <laughs> different things that have gone on out there, okay? And I absolutely love Tesla stock. And if this one fell huge, you know, I'm ready to buy some more, okay? I'm ready to buy some more. So this stock is number six out of 10 here, $745 here today. This is just a public account. This is just one of several different stock market accounts I own Tesla shares in. And uh, all of them, I have really low cost basis, okay? I bought in at the right time for this company, okay? My cost base is 227 in the public account, and all my other accounts is very low as well, okay? In that account, we own 150 shares. We're up $77,650. We're up $227 percent for a position I think I've been in for like less than two years it's done absolutely amazing for us and uh, I believe you know I don't want to get into my full bullish thesis about Tesla because I could literally spend like a half an hour just talking about my full bullish thesis and I have a million different videos on the channel talking about it but this is my my wishful thinking one and, and in order for this stock to go down huge we need that that stock market crash that I'm talking about could potentially be coming we need that to happen and then we need Tesla to get into that negativity cycle okay do you guys know the Tesla negative Activity cycle, this is what it is, okay? It, everybody starts saying Tesla has no demand. It, and imagine if the economy is super weak and some sales get hurt, then all of a sudden, oh, it's like, oh, Tesla has no demand, Tesla has no demand. And it's like, oh, Tesla's going BK, man. They're not gonna make it, okay? And then it's like, oh, Tesla, all the competition. This is this is what we call the Tesla negativity cycle. Now, this hasn't worked recently, and this is why the stock continues to roar higher and roar higher. It hasn't worked for shorts because Tesla demand is through the roof. The, uh, the chances of Tesla going BK are down down substantially from where they were a couple, you know, just a year or two ago, basically because Elon Musk has raised massive amounts of money and the business model has gotten to a place where now it can start kind of, you know, uh, basically funding itself. They're starting to make, you know, real profits on the bottom line. So that's kind of out of it. And the competition, uh, this competition we've been hearing about for years, it's still nowhere to be found. It was like, oh, they're coming, and it's like, they still haven't come, okay? So the, in terms of negativity cycle, it's non-existent at the moment, but when it comes to Tesla stock, you never know. You never really know. Maybe it gets up and rolling again, and maybe the stock can get pushed, pushed down and down and down, and it's, it gets in one of those things. It's wishful thinking. Who knows what will happen with that one? Probably not the most realistic scenario, but if it does, I'll gladly be a buyer of Tesla stock, okay? Texas Roadhouse, ticker symbol TXRH. This is stock number seven of these 10 stocks. It's a $42 stock here today. And uh, market capitalization about $3 billion on this. Ford P of about 16 and a half. And, and once again, those Ford P's, that, you know, that one's probably way off. I, th I don't think there's any way they're gonna make the type of EPS that analysts have uh, this upcoming year. I just don't think over over the next, you know, four quarters. I just don't think that's gonna happen, okay? I think it's gonna, things are gonna be way worse. We know Texas Roadhouse restaurants are closed all over the United States of America, as well as their up and coming, you know, chain, which is called Bubba's 33, they're all closed right now. You know, and this is a, this is a this is obviously a, a restaurant company that that thrives and does all their business for the most part on people coming in and sitting down at the restaurant. Yes, they have a to-go side of their business, but that's very very small. Most people go to Texas Roadhouse, they sit down in the restaurant, they order drinks, they order food, and, and that's the experience, and it's awesome. Okay, and uh, usually at forty-two bucks or whatever, I'm, I'm happily buying Texas Roadhouse. But the fact is. With their restaurants being closed and with the fact that when they're allowed to open back up, I think it's going to take a while. And when I say a while, I think it's going to take at least one to two, if not three years to ramp the business model back up to where it was just in 2019. I think it's going to take quite a while. I don't think they open back up and the restaurants are jam-packed with an hour, two-hour wait like they were, you know, literally just three, four months ago. Because you know most Texas Roadhouse, you goes in there, you know, on a Saturday night at six o'clock. It, shoo, good luck getting the table, man. It's going to take you at least an hour or two, and these restaurants are huge. But uh, I, I think the business model, it, it's obviously hurt significantly right now, and I think it's going to continue to be hurt for the next year or two, and it's not their fault. It's just that there's going to be a lot of people that are scared uh, of getting the Rony Rona, and they're not necessarily going to want to go to sit-down restaurants, uh, especially until a Vax is out there, okay? So with that being said, Texas Roadhouse under 33, I'll start buying the stock. That's, that's a level I'm looking at. Under 27, that's where I start buying the stock heavy, okay? I'm not running out to buy Texas Roadhouse here today because I don't think it is fully factored in 
how bad things will be for its business model, not just now, but over the next few years, okay? And, and so under 27, that's where I start buying heavy. Under 33, that's where I start nibbling. I love that one. Love the, the restaurant chain in general. I think they're gonna be a great company in the future, and uh, they, they've proven they can be a great company in the past. I just think the stock's way overvalued right now considering what's, what's happening right now and what will continue to happen over the next few years, okay? Stock number eight of 10 here is Activision Blizzard. Ticker symbol on this one is ATVI. If you guys don't know Activision Blizzard, just think of them as kind of the biggest video game Game company out there, right? They own brands like Call of Duty, they own brands like Black Ops, they own brands like Candy Crush, uh, all, all these different huge video game brands that are obviously benefiting massively from people being home right now and from people having a lot of time on their hands, right? ATVBI is kind of like a Netflix play in that respect where a lot of people are gaming right now, they have a lot of extra time in their hands and, and, and they're doing great. Their they're, they're, you know, business model is, is well positioned for a situation like this, right? Market capitalization on this one's about 50 billion dollars. Forward P on this one is about 26. Once again, we'll see where all that shakes out over the next year. Um, I'm not super interested at the current valuation. I, I can't say the stock is massively overvalued. It's certainly not, but I'm still not that super interested at, at the current valuation. Okay, I'll tell you where I'm thinking about buying a stock at. Okay, so in terms of the balance sheet, very good balance sheet on, on Activision Blizzard, looking at about $5.8 billion in cash and cash equivalents. $2.6 billion in debt. Essentially, they could pay off that debt tomorrow and still have well over $3 billion just sitting around in cash and cash equivalents. Extremely impressive. I would love to buy this stock. I used to own this stock a while back. I would love to own it again, but I need the stock under $57, okay? I need the stock under 57. It goes under 57, I will start buying some shares of Activision Blizzard. If it goes under 50, then I will buy a lot of Activision Blizzard, okay? If it was to go under 50, we had a big stock market crash scenario, I'm buying a lot. I'm buying a lot, okay? Stock number nine of 10. I've loved this company for a long time in terms of its business model, and I always hate it for its valuation. And that is Netflix. And this is probably like another dream on situation, kind of like a Tesla. The only difference is Tesla actually owns the stock. Netflix, I don't. You know, Netflix is around $440 here today. Uh, will it fall? Probably not. And even if we had a major stock market crash, you know, I think the the, the loss on, on the stock price would probably be limited just for the mere fact that, you know, when people are home, they, they use Netflix. And Netflix is, is very affordable, especially compared to like traditional cable services. And so if you're thinking about, would you cancel a, a traditional cable service or would you cancel Netflix? You'd probably, you know, cancel that $100 a month cable service you have or satellite before you'd cancel the 12 or $15 Netflix. So, you know, it is what it is with Netflix. Um, yeah, I just don't like the valuation. Uh, you know, I, I remember looking at this company years and years and years ago when they were first kind of launching their streaming products, and it was very intriguing to me. Uh, but the valuation, I mean, a Ford P on this one is 66. It, that's dang high. I mean, I mean, that's dang high, okay? Also, when it comes to Netflix, that's not the only negative when it comes to valuation. The other, the other kind of negative with the stock, and the other reason why I got to stay on the sideline, I would love to buy the stock, but I'll stay on the sideline, the balance sheet. So they do have $5 billion in, in cash cash equivalents. You might think that's a really huge number, and it's, it's a nice number, right? $5 billion. It's not that much when you look at the long-term debt. Look at how much the long-term debt has risen over the past few years. Just a couple years ago, they got $6.5 billion in long-term debt. Now they're approaching $15 billion of long-term debt on their balance sheet. The company has been debt loading and debt loading, which obviously, you know, from, from an investor standpoint that loves great balance sheet companies, it's a little worrisome. That's a lot of debt to add in a very short amount of time, okay? So here's my deal on Netflix. Yes, I would love to buy this stock, but I need Netflix under $300. Based upon the debt they continue to add to that balance sheet and based upon the fact that the, the valuation is very rich on this company, I would love to own Netflix, but I need it under 300. If it goes under 300, I will probably start nibbling some shares. Under 250, that's where I could actually see myself buying a lot of shares, okay? So I need that one to go down quite a bit to get to a place where I would you know, gladly start buying it. We'll see if that happens. It probably won't, but hey, it's wishful thinking, okay? The last stock up here of these 10, number 10 of 10 is the F. For B, okay, Facebook Corporation, $176 a share here today. Uh, about a half a about a half a trillion dollar market capitalization on this company, 4P of 20 and a half. Once again, we'll see where all that shakes out. Uh, so if we're thinking about the FB, okay, here's what's going on with their business model right now. Ad rates are down, 
okay? It's not Facebook's fault. It's just the fact that, you know, when businesses are hurt, businesses can't be open, they're probably going to spend less money on ads, right? So that's going on for the FB and that's also going on for Google and pretty much anybody that's, you know, does advertising space, okay? Ad rates are down, but usage is up massively. Like, and I mean ridiculously massively. Like, there's been articles written recently that, you know, Facebook's just trying to keep the lights on at this point in time because usage is so insane, right? With everybody kind of being home, you know, the FB platform, obviously IG, WhatsApp, you know, the messenger, the usage is going to go off the charts in a situation like that. So there's definitely probably a lot more ads being shown. Just, you know, if you're an advertiser, you're paying a lot less for those ads. And I can tell you for me personally, it's not like I've added a ton of new followers over the past month or so on, on IG, but I can tell you my story views are dramatically higher than they usually are. Why is this? Well, because people just have more time on their hands right now in this whole situation, okay? Uh, but at the end of the day, their, their services are, are, you know, services that are here to stay. There are services that, um, you know, most people love and a lot of people that even hate on the services are some of their biggest users, which is kind of a funny situation, okay? Uh, but, you know, I think they're, you know, it's just an amazing company. There's no way, you know, other way to describe it. One of the best balance sheets you'll find of ever, any company in the world. We're talking about tens of billions of dollars dollars of cash and investments sitting around the balance sheet and virtually no debt. It, you know, literally a top five balance sheet of any public company in the world. Well, this is a stock I'm a little divided on because here's the thing. I am up about 15% on the stock. We're up $8,494 just in the public account alone. This is not the only account I own, you know, Facebook shares in. But, you know, when I look at that, it's like, dang, I'm already making a lot of money on the stock. And with a cost base of 153, it's like, ah, could I pay 176? But at the end of the day, Anything under 200, it, it, I just love it for the FB, okay? I, I just look at this stock, anything under 200 is kind of easy money from a long-term perspective over the next five years, in my opinion. They're the sleeping giant of the big tech companies. You always hear about, well, when they talk about big tech, you, you're hearing about Apple, you're hearing about Google, you're hearing about Microsoft, you're hearing about Amazon. And they they brushed the FB all off to the side over the past year or so because of all the drama you know they were caught up in. Uh, I think they're the sleeping giant of the space. I think this is the company that over the next five years is going to grow into possibly the biggest market capitalization company in the entire world. They're a sleeping giant, and uh, I eventually they're going to wake up, and uh, people are going to be like, whoa, what just happened? Kind of like this deal we got going on with the private group, guys. Make sure you get on that before it ends. It ends April 19th. Uh, that's going to be the pinned comment down there. Once again, save yourself 150 bucks. Enjoy the private group. Learn as much as possible. Join the Discord channel. Chat. You know, we got all different people in that Discord chat. We got people with, you know, $5,000 in their portfolio to $5 million, okay? And everywhere in between. So make sure you enjoy that, you know, learn from the hundreds of videos in there. Uh, make sure you join us for the Monday live stream with me where I just do Q&A about stocks, about the market in general. Uh, that's an hour long. That's going to be happening this Monday. So make sure you take advantage of that. And we do that every single Monday. And obviously you get direct access to me. So that'd be the pinned comment down there. Can't wait to see you guys in there. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Great day.